High School Sports Live and Fox 43.2 present our Game of the Week from Hershey Park Stadium as the undefeated Cedar Cliff Colts take on the undefeated Hershey Trojans from here in Hershey Park Stadium. Good evening and welcome to a beautiful 70-degree night here at Hershey Park Stadium. I'm Travis Sparks. Four Chapman scheduled to be with us shortly and also TJ Smith from PennLive.com will be joining us throughout the broadcast as well. Beautiful night for football. In fact, all three games on the Central PA schedule are in the mid-pen keystone tonight. And we've got the best one for you here as 3-0 Hershey takes on 3-0 Cedarcliff. Bishop McDevitt and Redland uh, are both uh, in action tonight. It's actually Bishop McDevitt against Palmyra, and Redland is hosting Milton Hershey. So if you happen to go to West Shore Stadium, you are going to get a team from Hershey, but you're not going to get Cedarcliff. We're right here at Hershey Park Stadium tonight for the kickoff. The Cedarcliff Colts deferred the coin toss, and we will get underway with Hershey receiving the first half kickoff with Derek Guzman, number three, and Davon Williamson, number four, deep for the Hershey Trojans as we get underway here for high school football in week four, and off we go. And the kick by Carter Enders comes down to Guzman at the 20, the 25, and he's up to the 27-yard line, and already referee Michael Davis is in business with a penalty flag down. So we'll see with the... Uh, the penalty is most likely a block in the back and will knock him back 10 yards. It is actually a hold, so we'll knock back 10 yards from the 27, and the Hershey Trojans will get underway at the 17-yard line and a first down. We didn't expect you to bring it in early on, but we're going to welcome in TJ Smith from PennLive.com, a former Susquehanna Township player and happened to be one of Coach Chapman's students back in the day. Welcome, sir. Welcome to High School Sports Live. Well, I'm glad to be here, Travis. And, you know, I think we're going to have a, a great game on our hands. Two 3-0 teams both coming in with, you know, some things to prove and with chips on their shoulders. Cam Sweeney, number five, your starting quarterback. He sends Derek Guzman in motion. And the option give up front, and Cedarcliff matching him. And that is Angel Cabrera, and no gain on the play. It'll be second down. Cam Sweeney, uh, one of our players to watch tonight, as a uh, player to watch for uh, the Hershey Trojans, presented by our friends at FM Trust. 13 out of 16 on the year passing, 287 yards, five touchdowns. They haven't had to throw it a whole lot but they've been doing it very effectively, both on offense and defense. Hershey averaging 20, uh, 35 points per game in their three victories this year, 36, 35, and 34. And the give is to Cabrera off right tackle, makes a nice jump up to the 25-yard line. Give him eight, it'll be third down. And when we see Cedarcliff, they're gonna run from the, between the tackles. That's the only time you're gonna see going off tackle tonight is with Hershey. Yes, and Hershey has some big shoes to replace in Mike Sweeney and Painter from last season, but they got the guys to do it. Sweeney's younger brother, Cabrera. I'm expecting big games from both of these guys. Receivers to both sides. Joe Agurto, number 10 on the far side, and now here comes Guzman in motion again. The give to Cabrera on the outside, wrapped up immediately, and bringing him down right away is Blake Seacrest. And it's going to be third down and a punting situation for Hershey. So three and out for them early on. Seacrest will hear that name a couple times tonight as uh, we believe it's his brother. Bennett Seacrest is a quarterback for Cedar Cliff. Ready to punt away, Anthony Vasquezzi. And Tayon Abraham standing at his own 43 awaiting the punt. High left-footed punt, not gonna call fair catch. He's gonna try a nice juke move to the 45 and gets up to the 42-yard line. 
you saw with how high he was punting it, he thought, oh, he better fair catch up. But he took a chance, and it paid off for him. Definitely. It was a risky play, but he came down with the ball and, you know, actually got a few yards there out of that. So good play there by uh, Tayon Abraham. So the 42-yard line is where Cedar Cliff will get underway and a first down. 9.49 to go here in this first quarter. Glad you're with us here tonight on HSSLiveTV.com, Fox 43.2, and High School Sports Live. It is Bennett Sechrist out of the shotgun, and he's going to take it himself off the left side. Had receivers to both sides, and Sechrist will take it up to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of seven. Travis, like you said, Cedar Cliff here, they're looking to run between the tackles. And you can you ask their, their head coach, their offensive line, that's the bread and butter of this team. They're going to look to play behind those guys and look to control the time of possession and, and really take their time moving the ball here. Eric Shriver to Bennett Sechrist's right side. Man comes in motion, and they go with the motion man to the outside. That's Nathan Lusk, who had two touchdowns last week, and he's gone for another one. Two plays in, and Cedar Cliff scores. Touchdown from 35 yards out. And just like that, Cedar Cliff is on the board. Nathan Lusk, man, he has the athleticism to do that all game. At first, he doesn't control, contain those edges and those outsides. Well, Nathan Lusk uh, kind of beat me to it. He is our Capital Blue Cross player to watch for Cedar Cliff. He had a touchdown on offense, a touchdown on defense last week, and he scores here. And the seventh point is added on and good with 9.02 left to go here in the first quarter. Cedar Cliff on top, 7-0. Let's take a break from Hershey Park Stadium on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. That? Uh, nah, I, I never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. <sighs> I'm there. Just a 58-second drive, two plays, 42 yards to get us on the scoreboard here first with Cedar Cliff, 7-0 on top of Hershey. With T.J. Smith, I'm Travis Sparks, Charlie Fortney on site as well. I think Fort Chapman ended up uh, going back to the RV sale back here and uh, sleeping in one of those RVs. We might uh, we might have to wake him up from there. We'll see. Right, what, uh, right. <laughs> he had a hard day at school maybe. We'll see what happens here as for the second time Cedar Cliff kicks off, and this is... Derek Guzman now making it up the middle, and he's got a nice hold of the 30 to the 35. The juke move to the 40, and he gets up to the 42-yard line. A good return, given about 32 yards, but we have another penalty flag on the play. Flag thrown back at the 23, and, and once again, it is holding on the return. So the two penalties that the Hershey Trojans have tonight have both been holding and both on kickoffs. So we're going to march them back to the 13-yard line. We're going to mark it all the way back to the 12. Sorry, TJ, go ahead. No, that's two penalties that Hershey has gotten on kick returns and, you know, kind of delayed the start of their drive. Let's see if they can get things going here. Cabrera in the backfield with Sweeney. Receivers to both sides and a tight end. Now here comes Guzman in motion. Sweeney with the belly give and Sweeney right back on it after the fumble. So if you're Hershey, you're kind of wondering, all right, it has to get better from here. I, I, they actually gained a yard on the play. Which is all you can ask for in a play like that, man. Just getting the ball back, if you get a yard, that's extra. They gave him a half, mark it up a yard, so be nice and give him second and nine here from the 13-yard line. We're glad you're with us this week here on High School Sports Live. We apologize for not being with you 
last week, uh, but we ended up making the right decision with all the lightning delays in the area, and we're glad to be back with you tonight. Now the option play to the outside, and there's the pitch to Guzman, and he's got some open field to the 30 to the 35, and knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. That's a nice pickup of 30 and a first down for Hershey. Travis, I like how Sweeney read that defender on the outside and right at the last minute pitched it to his running back so he could get going and pick up even more yards there. Good play, Sweeney. Sweeney had really had, he had open field in front of him and he had Guzman on his side. He, he ended up making the right choice there. If he, if he had kept it, it might have been a 15-yard game, but he gave him an extra 15 on the, on the run there as well. Sweeney in the pistol again. Now Guzman comes near side, and he will get the pitch with the block in front and not going to get anywhere else. A loss of a yard and a nice play for Cedar Cliff. Among others, Joshua Garcia, number 54. So a loss of a yard on the play. Mark it second and 11. Nice size up front for Cedar Cliff. Try and match up with Hershey going between the tackles. You'll see Hershey bouncing out a lot. Five man line, 5 3 3 setup now for Cedar Cliff as Hershey in the pistol again. No motion. And Sweeney looking to throw. He's only thrown three incompletions all year long, and there's another completion. Beautiful catch on the, in the middle. Joe Agurto and a first down and a gain of 27. Looks like Hershey's starting to settle in on offense here. They're not having a lot of trouble moving the ball. They're getting the ball to their athletes. That's exactly what they're looking to do out there. Quickly out of the huddle at the 31. Nice drive going here This is after the penalty. This is their fifth play. Now Guzman comes back in motion. Cabrera looked like he was leaning forward a little bit and said Sweeney keeps it himself and gets it out to about uh, back to the line of scrimmage to the 27, among others in the tackles there, 42. Uh, Cade Finkenbonner and also uh, Hezekiah Latini. So loss of a, I actually gave him three on the play, so up to the 28. Ethan Castillo, the center, snaps it back, and they give us a Cabrera to the outside. He bounces it to the 10 and gets to the 7, and another first down for Hershey. First time Cabrera touched the ball in this drive and got 21. And Cabrera's a big back, man. He gets the ball. Once he gets them legs going, he's tough to bring down. Cedar Cliff, they're going to want to try to get him a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Cabrera again up the middle. Gets all the way down to the one. Tonight's game presented by our premier sponsor, the Pennsylvania Housing Financing Agency. Also our friends at Hoffman Ford and f and Bank and Trust. And also we're glad to partner once again with Fox 43 in the football frenzy. Don't forget Fox 43 football frenzy tomorrow night at 11 on Fox 43. He got down to the two. Second and goal from the two. Cabrera trying to run off the right side and runs right into the arms of Blake Sechrist. He got a yard, so be third and one. TJ, you played offensive lineman in your high school days. How much did you love or not love these goal-to-go situations? <laughs> oh, man, listen. Say goal-to-go, Travis. <laughs> they go the left side this time, and no. Stacked up again. Sean Elliott. And did not get in. So decision time, fourth and goal from the one. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Hershey looking to tie the ball game here. Fourth and goal inside the line. 
Full house backfield. Sweeney. Takes it himself. Does the Jalen Hurts move work? Yes, touchdown. Well, when you only need one yard, Travis, you can give it to your quarterback, and like you said, do your Jalen Hurts best impression. I mean, why not? Sweeney's got the athleticism to do it. Cedar Cliff, they've got some big boys up front, but it's one yard to go. It's big on big. Let's go put our guys up against yours. Cole Goodman on to attempt the extra point to try and tie it up here. Out of the hold of Nick Willis. And it is through. 10 plays, 88 yards, 4.56 off the clock. We are tied at Hershey Park Stadium. Cedar Cliff 7, Hershey 7 on Fox 43.2. You may recycle your electronics, appliances, and mercury thermostats at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. In addition to eight local drop-off sites for recyclable materials. Recycling matters in Dolphin County. Since 2001, Dolphin County has recycled over 10,000 tons of electronics. And 1.6 million tons of recyclables like cardboard and plastics. Keep up the great work. Bring, Bring it on. on. All tied up at seven here early on from Hershey Park Stadium. Glad you're with us tonight with T.J. Smith. I'm Travis Sparks. Charlie Fortney will be joining us a little later on at halftime as well. Coming up at halftime, the Jack Giambalvo Halftime Report, Capital Blue Cross and AT&T Halftime Stats, and Capital Region first half highlights and we hope that the highlights are as back and forth as they've been here in the first quarter. We have a lot to run through as kickoff will come again from Cole Goodman, who just kicked the extra point. Their first kickoff tonight. And Goodman booms it to the end zone. Once you hit the end zone, you cannot return it. Michael Jones took it in the end zone, and it is a touchback 20-yard line. First down for Cedar Cliff. Cedar Cliff is going to want to come out here and get a good drive going. You know, that was a statement drive by Hershey coming back and responding after Cedar Cliff took it down and scored the touchdown. So Cedar Cliff from the 20. One receiver and now Tyrell Hills, number seven up front. He gets three yards. And if you have watched Cedar Cliff football over the years, this is what you are used to. Three yards between the tackles. Absolutely. Cedar Cliff is known for having running backs. You know, a few years ago, they had the Morris brothers. I mean, they have no problem coming down and taking three to four yards of carry until you figure out a way to stop it all the way downfield. Switch it up now in the backfield with uh, Michael Jones to Bennett Seacrest's side, four receiver set. And Seacrest is gonna run it himself out to the 25. He's gonna get a first down and a block on the outside to the 40, to the 45, 50. Run out of bounds at the 42. And a first down. Give him about 35 on the play, a first down for Bennett Seacrest. So mark it at the 42-yard line. It's good blocking up front by the, by the lineman on Cedar Cliff. And they go with the four wide set again with Michael Jones now on the left side of Bennett Seacrest. Seacrest is going to lateral it. That's a live ball. Ah, oh, they shouldn't have called it down like that. That was a backwards pass. Cedar Cliff actually got a break on that one because you we're we're right in front here and you could see the ball coming off to the side and the referee had a bad angle on it. So absolutely that was a gift for Cedar Cliff there. Good defense by Cedar Cliff. Way to be aware. So incomplete. The market at the 43 once again. 
Hang on, yeah, it's, it should be at the 42, and the referee on the far side notices it. It's like, wait a minute here. Mark it up here. There we go. I think Coach Chapman commented on that in one of the games earlier this year. They got it right this time. Now a bounce to the outside, and only about a two-yard gain as Eric Shriver gets it to about the 40. So a third down situation now for Cedarcliff. Cedarcliff, their first possession, two, two plays and a touchdown. So this is their first opportunity to try and convert a third down. Got to get it to the 32. And Hershey wants a timeout. We will take a timeout as well. 2.41 left to go. First period tied at seven between Hershey and Cedarcliff on Fox 43.2. Ah, break a box's toast. Recommend the whole rewiring. Well, that sounds expensive. Is that something a home equity loan could help with? No clue, but listen, if you're trying to make money fast, head down to the horse track and let it all ride on old Cloud Stomper. Jockey's my cousin. Well, second. That works for you? <laughs> it will work. It will. Let me think about that. Borrow better with our range of fast and easy loans. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Hershey called that timeout. They have two remaining here in the first half. As they wanted to get set for this third and eight play coming up for Cedarcliff. As they will try to go from a four receiver set again. This, this is a big play for Hershey's defense. Up to this point, Cedarcliff has kind of had their way with them. This is a big third down to come on and get their offense back on the field. Back to throw is Sechrist. Looking, firing down the middle, had Jones incomplete. Had about a two-yard cushion on the defense, but could not connect, and it'll be fourth down, and we expect to see the punt team. So Evan Ziegler back at his own 45 to get the punt. Gets a spinner off and gets a Cedar Cliff bounce. And oh, wow. He did not go into the end zone. The first tap was at the four, so the market at the four. And a beautiful punt. And Hershey's going to have to travel 96 if they want a touchdown here. So a great punt to set up Hershey at their four, at their four yard line. Hershey has only thrown one pass tonight. The rest of their nine plays were all runs. A beautiful 10 play drive that they're coming off of. And it's a give to Cabrera, off right tackle. Gets up to about the six, a gain of two. Sweeney coming in from the sideline. He comes back to Coach Painter to get the play every time. Receivers here to the near side. P.J. Paterno, 13, and Derek Guzman, 3. Cabrera in the backfield. Now Guzman in motion. And that uh, run pass option again to Cabrera. He gets up to the 10. Give him four yards on the play, and it'll be third down. They get to the 14 for a first down, so make it a short five along four here for a first down. Big tight end here, we can see is back with us, 89, Isaiah Danner. Lines up here on the near side. We'll see if they go his way. No, they're going to. Sweeney throws it, and the pass is caught by Guzman, and a first down. Nice diving catch. 
to take it to the 23. That's a good pitch and catch there with Sweeney and Guzman. I really like what I'm seeing out of Sweeney right now. He's making good reads when they're running the option. He looks real comfortable in the pocket. I am really impressed with his efficiency. He's now 15 for 18 on the year. He's only had three incompletions all year long. Guzman comes back in motion and the give. No, it's going to be Sweeney taking it himself. He waits patiently. Now he's going to get out to the outside, breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, and there he goes. 50, 45, and out of bounds. Right at the 45 and a first down for Hershey in a gain of 28. Again, another good read by Sweeney on the option. One on one in space, make a guy miss. I short change to make it a 32 yard gain for Sweeney as he went off left side. Just impressed with his, with, with his footwork especially. So into Cedar Cliff territory goes Hershey again. And the give into the belly of Cabrera, bounces it outside, has a tackle in front of him, and gets it up to about the 37 in what will most likely be the last play of the first quarter. A good one so far from Hershey Park Stadium. Both teams with a touchdown drive, both teams with a defensive stand. Both teams looking very good on offense. 7-7, Hershey and Cedar Cliff. We go to the second quarter on High School Sports Live and Fox 43.2. That's everything. Receipts in the bag. Awesome. Say, how do you, like, budget? Hmm. Well, I have a spreadsheet that I update annually. Okay. And I round up on income and round down on expenses. Well, that sounds backwards, right? No, I'm pretty sure that's right. Income up, debt down. <laughs> Looks good on paper. Huh. Keep your budget in shape with our personal finance tool. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Lock it up at Hoffman Ford. Only Hoffman Ford offers two years maintenance included with any new 2023 Ford car, truck, or SUV order. Plus, lock in Ford's lowest APR rate today. Get two years maintenance included exclusively at Hoffman Ford. Why would you order from anywhere else? Who has your best deal on a new Ford? Hoffman has it. Hoffman Ford, just what you're looking for. Hoffman has it. 7-7, seven, seven. Cedar Cliff and Hershey here from Hershey Park Stadium. Mid-pen Keystone matchup tonight between undefeated teams. The other two matchups tonight in central Pennsylvania are both mid-pen Keystone games. Bishop McDevitt and Palmyra and Milton Hershey at Redland will try and get updates for you at halftime. That is a lateral and it's out to Guzman and he gets back to the 39 yard line and not much else. It's a good tackle by Cedar Cliffs. Elijah Wilburn in space there. So a loss of two will make it third down and four. Back at the 39. Whistles and another timeout Hershey. That is their second. We'll take timeout as well. 11.25 to go here in the first half. 7-7 Hershey Park. It's Hershey and Cedar Cliff back after this on Fox 43.2. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal, to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs, and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. On the way on the halftime show, the Jack G. and Volvo halftime report. It's the Capital Blue Cross and AT&T halftime spats. The Capital Region first half highlights. And our friend Charlie Fortney will talk to our friends at FNM Trust, one of our sponsors this year on High School Sports Live. It is third down and four 
for Hershey, 39 yard line. They gotta get to the 35 for the first down and two men in motion. They gotta set for a second before they snap it. And the pistol goes Cabrera off the left side. Stutter steps, has the first down and more to the 30, to the 27. Great job of stopping and starting by Cabrera and a first down for Hershey. And you know, if, if Sweeney and his Hershey offense can continue to get in third and four, third and three, real manageable third downs, put themselves in a good position. So they bump it up to the 27 yard line and a first down. To the outside goes 13 PJ Paterno. Guzman comes back in motion. And the give this time, there was no give. Sweeney kept it himself. Carter Klein faked me out, and Sweeney is hurt. He took a hard tackle back at the 30 yard line. And we're going to have a stoppage in play here. And that's Nathan Lusk again for Cedar Cliff, causing havoc in the backfield there. Let us take time out as well. 11.02 to go. First quarter tied at seven on Fox 43.2. Thanks for watching Mr. Pickles again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. Who knows? He knows. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Cam Sweeney came off under his own power. So Grant Later, number two, a 5'10 sophomore, comes in at quarterback. Don't be surprised if he hands it off to 21 Carter Klein right behind him. Two receivers to his right. Guzman comes in motion. And that is the case. Carter Klein between the tackles and gets back to the original line of scrimmage to about the 27 yard line. So Grant later pressed into action here and he'll be faced with a third down and 10. With Sweeney, the way he was reacting, it looks like he fell on the ball. Might have been just his, his, his the ball went right into his gut and he just had the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, that's what it looked like. We hope the best for him as later comes in on third down and 10. Move the receivers to the near side. See if Klein ends up going that way. He does, he bounces outside and a great job of blowing up the play by 52, Gunnar Miller. And it only goes for about a yard, so up to the 26. And it'll be fourth and nine. And I like that call by Hershey. You know, your starter quarterback's out. No need to put your, you know, your, your, your second string quarterback in a position where he's got to go out and do too much. Hand the ball off, you're in good position. Let's try to get some points here on the board with the field goal. 43 yard field goal. We don't say that a lot here on High School Sports Live, but they're gonna try it. Cole Goodman, a 43 yard field goal. They got 10 on the play clock, they got plenty of time. Still trying to get everybody shuffled around from the left hash. Snap is down and it's gonna be short. A little bit off to the right, and no, they can't return it. Nice thought. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a Warren, uh, uh, rather a Antonio Cromarty 109-yard kickoff return, but it goes into the end zone and it will be taken at the 20-yard line. So just as good as a 13-yard punt, and it's first down for Cedar Cliff. It would have been good, I want to say, from maybe 38, 39, but just a little bit out of Goodman's range. So Cedar Cliff starts up from their own 20. Nathan Lusk to the far side and a full house backfield here on the inside. And now uh, Carter Ender switches ends. Sechrist with the give up the middle and getting to the 24 yard line. Not much more after that. Goes Tyrell Hills to pick up a four. It looks like Cameron Sweeney's coming back out here on defense, so looks to be good and healthy, and it's all good news. 
Good to see him back in as he plays defense on second down and six from his safety position. One man in the backfield again for Bennett Seacrest. He's going to look to throw to the left side over his head, incomplete. Intended for Julius Torado. Bring up third down. Next game that we'll have for you here on High School Sports Live will be next Friday night from Chapman Memorial Field as Cumberland Valley hosts Harrisburg. Join us 7 o'clock next Friday night here on Fox 43.2 and HSS Live TV. Six-man front for Hershey. They get back onside and they give up to middle to Tyrell Hills and he's not going to get the first down. It's uh, maybe a gain of two and the defense for Hershey holds. The fourth and four, and here comes the punt team. So Guzman back to receive the punt from Ziegler. The left footed punt gets away. Now he calls for the fair catch. And a good, uh, good time to do that. 37-yard line for Hershey, where they will begin first down at 7.58 to go in the first half. So the Colt penalty, are they going to punt again? Try and get some better field position? It's the way it looks like it. So the original line of scrimmage was the 26. And they're going to mark it off back to the 16 yard line. So they're going to make them punt it again. This time, Guzman lines up in Cedar Cliff territory at the 49. Ziegler back to punt. That was a bad snap. End up being a better decision to take the penalty because the ball will be downed at the 45-yard line. So a net of eight yards on the penalty call. So a first down at the 45-yard line. as that was the first penalty on the night for Cedarcliff. Hershey with two penalties, 20 yards tonight, and Cedarcliff with just one penalty for 10 yards. And so far, no harm, no foul with that penalty. And Hershey was moving the ball before Sweeney went out with that injury. So let's see, let's see what they can do here on their next possession. Late substitution coming in. That's LJ Douglas at tight end, number 27. Guzman and... Agurto, number 10, lining up on the outside. And Sweeney running for his life already, and he's down. A and great play on the sack by Nathan Lusk. We've been calling his name all night. I feel like that won't be the last time we'll be saying that name, Travis. So a loss of 10 on the play, and he just overcame the block by Angel Cabrera. And the sack is a loss of 10, so it'll be second down and 20. Second sack on the night for Cedar Cliff. This time Douglas takes it up the middle. Actually, that's Cabrera. Cabrera gets four up the middle, so third down now and 16. And this is what Hershey wants to avoid. You know, we just kind of gave him kudos for getting into manageable third downs, third and fours, third and threes. This is something where, you know, it takes it takes options out of your playbook when you have third and long. So let's see what let's see what Hershey 
and uh, Sweeney draws draws up here. We send Paterno and Guzman far side. Agurto to the near side. Sweeney lines up in the pistol with Cabrera behind him, and he's going to throw. And can't do anything. And actually, a smart play to try and get get the bass is incomplete, but that's still a smart play to not, not lose any more yardage. Good coverage downfield by Cedar Cliff's defense. Good pressure by the interior lineman up front. Get their offense back on the field and try to get a drive going here. So almost halfway through quarter number two. And we are still knotted at seven. Hershey looking over to the sideline saying, hey, we need another guy here. 15 on the play clock. They're doing okay. Don't have to worry about a penalty just yet. Ty, flag down. And it'll be touched at the 43. Let's see what this flag is. Referee Michael Davis discussing options. And it's a hold on Cedar Cliff, so back him up 10 yards, and it'll be a first down. So mark it back to the 32-yard line. So easy to remember the penalty so far. Two holding penalties on each team, 20 yards apiece. Got to get the chain guys in, in order before Snap on the ball for the next play here. So first down for Cedar Cliff now on their own 32. As the sun finally sets here, here in Hershey. Lusk on the near side as the lone receiver. Bennett back to throw. He wants Lusk, trying to break free from coverage, and he does, he does get the call. I was going to say, the lineman here on the near side didn't give it to him, but the, uh, but the back judge did. And I was, as I was watching that play, Travis, I was looking for the flag because he definitely had his hands on Lusk uh, probably about 10, 15 yards down the field. The original looks like the call is holding, and that is what the case is. So 10 yards and a first down. So they get back the kick penalty in the form of holding on the other end. So it's now first down at the 42. Lusk and Toronto come here to the near side. And Bennett gives. And the run up the middle, maybe about. Driver for about a yard. So the second down. That was a good tackle there by Hershey's Julian Sharp. Stepped right up, filled the hole. Low pad level. Just a good tackle there. You love it when the kids at this level show the proper technique for tackling and getting the shoulders in and get, keeping the head out of it. Absolutely. Two receivers again with an H back. And that man goes in motion. And Seacrest back to throw. Chased out of there. And now has running room. It gets a nice block and a truck to the 42-yard line. And that was a heck of a shot. And that was all Seacrest there. I mean, he had Lyman breathing down his neck, showed off his athleticism to get out of the pocket, and not only avoid the sack, but also pick up the first down for Cedar Cliff there. I'm going to make that as a candidate for our play of the game tonight here as Seacrest that's only 15 yards, but that's going one way. Then having to come back the other way, gets a nice block up front, and then lays the lumber himself. 
to get the first down at the 42. Mark it back actually to the 43, so 14 on the game. Now Sechrist looking to go long, has a man and it's almost intercepted. It was two on one coverage and the one almost intercepted it. A great job there by Anthony Vasquezzi. Yeah, that's a great play by Vasquez. He did everything right there except bring that thing down. So now some switches in personnel here as we go for a second down play. Luska, the only receiver. Kate Finkbonner, 42, also in there on cover on uh, in the backfield as they run left side. And it doesn't work. They go to Tyrell Hills. They tried bouncing it to the outside and did not work that time. And that's Hershey's David Mesh just making another great tackle out in space. You know, with four minutes left in the clock, left in the half, that's a big tackle there. So a third and long now for Cedar Cliff. It's third down and 14. More substitutions come in. They bring in uh, Teon Abraham here to the near side as part of a four receiver set. Back to throw is Bennett looking for the screen and it's batted away immediately. Oh, what a great job on defense. Let's give 52 Corey Schaefer Jr., the senior, a big heads up there as uh, really aware of the play, got his hands up at the, at the right time. And that's what you want your lineman to do, Travis. If you can't get to the quarterback and bring him down for the sack, you get your arms up, get your hands up in the passing lanes and hope you can bat the ball down. And that's exactly what Schaefer Jr. did there. So Guzman will line up at his own 15 for Hershey. As Ziegler gets ready to, to left foot it down and fair catch again called for. And does so at the 15 yard line. 32-yard punt, no return at 3.44 left to go here in the first half. Coming up, the Jack Giambalvo Halftime Report, Capital Blue Cross and AT&T Halftime Stats, and the Capital Region uh, Insurance Agency First Half Highlights. Got a lot of them so far, even though the scoreboard doesn't show it. A lot of, uh, a lot of nice offensive plays on either end. So Cam Sweeney back in there for Hershey as they start first down at their own 15. And we have a jump. Looks like a false start on Hershey there. Fourth penalty on the night for them. So instead of first and 10 at the 15, it's first and 15 at the 10. And TJ, as a former offensive lineman, you had no holding penalties in your career or no false never, starts, correct? Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> None that were called, let's put it that way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good job of hiding it there. Six on the play clock as Sweeney gets it away to Cabrera. Going left side and then dropped on his back after getting just back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second down and 15. Sweeney back from the sideline getting the call. 20 on the play clock, 3-11 left to go here in the first half. Agurto, Guzman, your near side receivers. Guzman back in motion. Cabrera takes it in his belly and gets it up to about uh, the 11. That's only a gain of one. And it looks like Cedar Cliff's not going to use a timeout here. So if you're Hershey, what you don't want to do is come out and try to force something downfield and give Cedar Cliff, you know, an opportunity for a turnover, something to just gain momentum going in before the half here. Guzman is now lining up here on the near side. They're bringing Agurto back here. I wouldn't be surprised if they bring Guzman in motion. Not going to do that. 
Instead, he, Sweeney is going to throw. Flushed out, looking, and the pass is caught. And the big tight end gets it up to the 27-yard line. That is Isaiah Danner, and that is enough for a first down. Haven't seen that play yet tonight. It looks but like he, 89 is down. Yeah, that's Danner. He was awkwardly tackled. Check out the replay here. As Sweeney bought all sorts of time. And just like he was rolled up on his, uh, on his back ankle. And there's a flag on the play as well. So let's keep it here for now. We'll see what the flag is all about. As Danner gets up. And 12 men on the field against Hershey. Referee Michael Davis still talking with the Hershey Trojan sideline to explain the reasoning behind the penalty. Still waiting for an official call here because the ball was marked at the 26. Now the officials are going to conference together here. So 12 men. And the call was made. Uh, usually the. All right, I'm confused because the, the signal from the referee for one hand on the head is usually ineligible. And he, did, he gave me. That's a, that's, that's a new one by me. So it ends up being fourth and 19, and Hershey has to punt from their end zone. High spiraling kick, and he made the fair catch. He yep. called fair catch, and that's going to be a couple flags here. We had one flag on the far side, and here on the near side, we had another flag. You can't call fair catch and then and then go ahead and run. So I'm 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 still back on the play before trying to figure out the loss of down for the call that was that was made previously. And then we'll figure it out eventually. The bottom line is the punt here, and now we have one penalty declined and a hold on Cedar Cliff, which will be accepted, and it'll be first down for the Colts. So they, the illegal fair catch is declined. The holding is accepted. The 148 mark here before halftime. I think they're talking now about all right, which which penalty has uh, carries more weight with it, the illegal fair catch or the hold? So the fair catch was made at the 40, and the hold. Mark it back 10, so we're at midfield. And with a minute and 48 seconds, that's more than enough time, Travis, for Cedar Cliff to come down, run their offense. They don't got to, you know, try to do too much here. So Bennett Seacrest will give the handoff to Tyrael Hills to the left side and gets the first down and more. And the clock will stop. As Hills gets the game to the 34, that's 16 yards, a first down, and the clock stops. It'll start up again once they spot the ball.
Another great job of juking by Tyrell Hills. As Cedarcliff comes out in a four receiver set again, Michael Jones in the backfield. Seacrest, high snap, brings it in beautifully. Now going for the home run, and he's got it. Touchdown. Beautiful play to Owen Anastasi. Touchdown from 34 yards out. It's a big play going into the half for Cedarcliff. And another two play touchdown drive. Here's the replay. As Anastasi just beat his receiver, beat, beat his, uh, his defender rather. Just speed to the outside, catch it at its highest point, bring it in for the touchdown. Enders to add the extra point, it's good. Two plays, 50 yards, 31 seconds. And Cedarcliff takes a one touchdown lead, 117 to go left here in the first half. Cedarcliff 14, Hershey Park, here at Hershey Park Stadium, Hershey 7 on Fox 43.2. The Jack G. and Bobo family of dealerships. We have millions of dollars in new and pre-owned inventory across eight brands in five locations. Buick GMC, Hyundai, Mazda, Stettler Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, and G. and Bobo Hyundai of Hanover. And we want to thank the local community for voting us the 2023 Official Community's Choice Award Best of York and Hanover winner in five different categories. Come out today and find out why your friends and neighbors voted G. and Bobo number one. The Jack G. and Bobo family of dealerships. Five great locations. Online at gmbobo.com. 34-yard touchdown pass. Owen Anastasi brought it in from Bennett Seacrest at the south end zone, and it's 14-7 Cedarcliff. Hershey with one timeout and 117 to work with here as they await the kickoff. Coming up, Jack G. and Volvo halftime report, Capital Blue Cross and AT&T halftime stats, Capital Region Insurance Agency first half highlights. And we'll talk with the friends at FNM Trust as this kick goes into the end zone. Guzman wanted to return it. He had some room, but once it crosses the end line, ball is dead, 20-yard line, first down. With TJ Smith, Travis Sparks, great to have you with us here at Hershey Park Stadium. TJ, last couple drives for Hershey. Three and out, three and out. They missed a field goal. Their first drive was a touchdown, and their first, or rather, second drive was a touchdown. First drive was three and out. They need to put something together here. Absolutely. 19, a new uh, new face in here. Ben Shepard at wide receiver. And a three receiver set. Cam's going over the middle, and it's picked off Nathan Lusk. To the 30, coming around to the 25, looking for a block. 10, five, does he get in? Yes, touchdown! And that's the second week in a row Nathan Lusk has returned an interception for a touchdown. Great catch by Nathan Lusk there. Even better run back to get into the end zone. This kid's just a football player. They were looking for Isaiah Danner once again on the out route. Let's take a look at the replay here. Sweeney throws and it was just underthrown. And a great job of athleticism from Lusk. Now does he? Yes, he did. He broke the plane before the ball came out of his hand. It's a touchdown. And that is two touchdowns in 13 seconds. Kick is good. Time out on the field. Let us break as well. 104 to go, first half. 21 for Cedarcliff, seven for Hershey on High School Sports Live on Fox 43. All across Pennsylvania, families are living their lives in their own homes. Not long ago, none of these families believed it possible. And then they discovered there was someone who could help. What was once only a dream is now a reality. Welcome home.
Well, Nathan Lusk interception return for a touchdown could be our Capital Regions Insurance Agency play of the game. Join us in the post-game show to find that out, as well as our Hoffman Ford player of the game. This kick will not go to the end zone, and Guzman will take it from his own six. Out to the 15, to the 20, and brought down by Tyrell Hills at the 21-yard line. We just talked about it, uh, possession of go, Travis. Hershey didn't need to come out and force anything, give Cedar Cliff any momentum going into the half. I mean, this was just a 7-7 game with four minutes to go, and things have completely changed. With Cedar Cliff getting the ball coming out at a half, this is a big possession here in this last 58 seconds for Hershey. They did have a shootout earlier this year, their opening game. They won an overtime, 36-35. They're averaging 35 per game, and they get it out to Agrudo. And he gets it out to the 29, making the 28-yard line, and a gain of seven. Clock continues to run. Sweeney looking again, under pressure, now steps up. He's got the first down, the clock will stop. So get to the 40, 12 yards on the game. And clock runs again at 25 and 24. Three receiver set. Cabrera in as an extra blocker. Sweeney gets out of a tackle. Gonna throw it up and intercept it again. And Sweeney took a big hit at the end of that play there, Travis. I hope he's okay. Julius Torado that time with the interception. Let's see what the flag is here on the near side. See if we can catch it on the replay here. With the, he gets out of one tackle. Then, so the face mask penalty against the Trojans. That'll tack on 15 to the end of the play. So the, the drive will start now. So it's only five yards. So if you're Cedar Cliff, do you take a chance here? and go for broke with 12 seconds to go, up 14? Or do you kneel it down and take it to the half? They're coming out in a four receiver set. Sechrist, and they're gonna run it and met at the point of attack. And Shriver loses four yards, and that is it for the first half. And it's been a good first half. Cedar Cliff, 21, Hershey, seven. Jack Giambalvo, halftime report. Coming up next. Thanks for joining us here tonight on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. Guys, I'm with Chip Lawson, the Vice President and Commercial Services Market Manager for F&M Trust. Chip, I did my research, you're a football guy. You have to look forward to dialing in and watching these games and even with NFL coming. Charlie, I love playing football uh, growing up and you know this time of year always brings back fond memories. Great community time, great atmosphere, and uh, love it. F&M Trust has been in this community for years. Talk about that history and talk about why uh, being in the community is so important to F&M Trust. F&M Trust was founded in 1906 in Chambersburg and our corporate headquarters is still there today. We currently have 22 offices in South Central PA, in the four counties uh, in South Central as well as uh, Washington County, Maryland. We service uh, retail, commercial and investment and trust clients in, in those offices. We have a mortgage center in Camp Hill as well as mortgage loan officers in our community offices across our footprint. We have a regional headquarters in Harrisburg which is where my office is located and uh, we opened a few years ago and has really uh, grown that marketplace for us. Chip, talk about the interest in High School Sports Live and wanting to be involved in 
the education of high school sports and the student athletes that get uh, the exposure night in and night out. Absolutely, Charlie. And one of the things that FNM strongly believes in is supporting our communities. The bank contributes hundreds of thousands of dollars and thousands of hours of volunteer service to community groups and organizations throughout the year. One of the areas of focus for us is education. So supporting high school football is uh, a natural fit for us. We know everyone involved in these games from players to coaches to cheerleaders and to members of the band really have invested their time and talents to represent their school and their communities to the best of their ability. It's also an opportunity to be a part of a great group of sponsors there that share FNM Trust's commitment to community. Well, we appreciate you being involved in High School Sports Live and supporting our community effort, but you guys are doing a lot of neat things out there. Why don't you hit on a couple of those key initiatives? Our entire team is actively engaged in the uh, many of the nonprofits as well as the chambers of commerce that serve our, serve our region. For instance, we're donating time to assist with the rebuild of the Broad Street Market, which had an unfortunate fire earlier this year. We have and, and will be participating in the United Way's Day of Caring, where we support the uh, nonprofits in the area through volunteer hours. So we have a team of people that volunteer to walk for the American Heart Association fundraiser at City Island, and we've received a tremendous response, and our, our team is very happy to be involved, especially in after-hours projects as well. What was that like playing high school sports and uh, just, just you watching these football games on TV, you almost have to relate to these kids today. Oh, it's, you know, Friday Night Lights is the best. I mean, it's really tremendous. It's a, it's a great community uh, community event, and, and, you know, towns light up when, when those Friday night games are on. What's your favorite memory as a high school athlete? On that football field, playing defense. you got to have one. Oh, I, I do, and it was a uh, pick six for a touchdown to win the game. How many yards? Uh, it was uh, about 60. Gary, guys, we got a guy here that if someone gets hurt in the second half, let's put him in. <laughs> Chip Watson, thank you, FNM Trust. Reaching the community, supporting High School Sports Live. We appreciate the partnership. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal, to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. Thanks for watching Mr. Pickles again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. He knows. He knows. He does. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. In the dynamic world of construction, Groff Tractor and Equipment stands as your trusted John Deere and working dealer. With our extensive range of construction, sales, and rentals, we provide the equipment you need to tackle any project. But our commitment doesn't stop there. Our comprehensive parts and service departments are there to make sure your equipment is operating at its best, minimizing downtime and maximizing productivity. Our dedicated technicians ensure your equipment operates at peak performance. Our technician internship opportunities provide a pathway to a successful career. Learn from skilled professionals and grow with us. Trust, reliability, and exceptional service. That's Groff Tractor and Equipment. Stop by, give us a call, or visit our website today for more information. Groff Tractor and Equipment, your number one source for everything under construction. Do you want to answer that? Uh, nah, I I'd never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. I'm there. You may recycle your electronics, appliances, and mercury thermostats at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. In addition to eight local drop-off sites for recyclable materials, 
Recycling Matters in Dauphin County. Since 2001, Dauphin County has recycled over 10,000 tons of electronics and 1.6 million tons of recyclables like cardboard and plastics. Keep up the great work. Bring, Bring it on. on. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal, to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs, and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. Thanks for watching Mr. Pickles again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. Who knows? He knows. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. The Jack G and Volvo family of dealerships. We have millions of dollars in new and pre owned inventory across eight brands in five locations Buick GMC, Hyundai, Mazda, Stettler Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, and G and Volvo Hyundai of Hanover. And we want to thank the local community for voting us the 2023 Official Communities Choice Award Best of York and Hanover winner in five different categories. Come out today and find out why your friends and neighbors voted G and Volvo number one. The Jack G and Volvo family of dealerships, five great locations. Online at GMBalvo.com. across Pennsylvania, families are living their lives in their own homes. Not long ago, none of these families believed it possible. And then they discovered there was someone who could help. What was once only a dream is now a reality. Welcome home. This is the Jack Giambalvo Halftime Report on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2 and High School Sports Live and HSSLiveTV.com. Great to have you with us tonight at Hershey Park Stadium on a beautiful night for football with T.J. Smith. I'm Travis Sparks. Uh, Mr. Chapman, do you have your uh, late note, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he is with us. He'll be with us for the second half as well. Uh, your former student, TJ, did an awesome job here in the first half uh, analyzing things for us. And it's uh, wonderful. A great job here by Cedar Cliff, especially in the second half on defense. Uh, they're, they, they turned it up, especially Nathan Lusk here in the second half. Yeah, Nathan Lusk is the name you want to remember. He's making plays in the run game. He had the big interception return for a touchdown there at the end of the half. This guy, if I'm Hershey, I'm looking for where he's at before every play and I'm trying to go the opposite way. This kid is just a gamer, he's a playmaker, and I expect him to have another big half for Cedar Cliff. Let's take a look at the Capital Blue Cross halftime uh, highlights here before we get to our AT&T halftime stats. A great job by defenses early on and just some offense as well uh, to take us through the first half as uh, some, some great plays early on here. And we get the first play with the touchdown that was uh, driven early on. Capital Region's, uh, Region Insurance Agency highlights here as Hershey ended up, uh, excuse me, uh, they got the first down. Hershey did after a, a long delay here. And then there's the first touchdown here, Owen Anastasi getting the pass from Bennett Sechrist here. Cam Sweeney looking to throw, and there's the interception by Nathan Lusk working his way through the field here, and that's his second week in a row with a defensive touchdown. And a great job there by, by Cedar Cliff, and a good play here by Guzman getting uh, down the sideline here for Hershey as well. Sweeney back to throw. He did have a couple incompletions, uh, but uh, made a nice play to Agurdo there. Uh, for the completion, and then uh, Bennett Sechrist with a nice play to the outside, and it gets outside, and it gets out of bounds. He had a nice game there, too. Sweeney was looking to throw, get to the outside. Guzman, a nice diving catch there, and that got a first down to keep a drive alive. 
and Sweeney still working around, getting off the sideline. And I believe this is the hit where he uh, he trucks his defender. No, he got out of bounds. I was, got him confused with Seacrest here. As we look at our halftime numbers here, presented by AT&T and Capital Blue Cross. Kind of even on both sides. Hershey had a little more possession, but they had a couple turnovers as well and a couple late penalties there. 189 yards total for Hershey. Just 140 for Cedar Cliff under not too many plays, but those turnovers, uh, we haven't switched there. I apologize for that. But turnovers and penalties, turnovers, two turnovers, which led to seven points for Hershey. And four, as in, uh, as with any team, you got to keep the turnovers down no matter what point of the game it is. Absolutely. You, you see the stats there, and Hershey had put the ball, they were running the football really well, it looks like. And to, to see Cedarcliff get that pick six, that's a huge momentum change. We're going to take another break here on the halftime show. Capital Blue Cross, and uh, thanks to our friends at Jack G. and Volvo uh, family of dealerships. 21 7, Cedarcliff on top of Hershey here. Third quarter action coming up next on HSSLiveTV.com. The Jack G. and Bobo family of dealerships. We have millions of dollars in new and pre-owned inventory across eight brands in five locations. Buick GMC, Hyundai, Mazda, Stettler Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, and G. and Bobo Hyundai of Hanover. And we want to thank the local community for voting us the 2023 Official Community's Choice Award Best of York and Hanover winner in five different categories. Come out today and find out why your friends and neighbors voted G. and Bobo number one. The Jack G. and Bobo family of dealerships. Five great locations. Online at gmbobo.com. All across Pennsylvania, families are living their lives in their own homes. Not long ago, none of these families believed it possible. And then they discovered there was someone who could help. What was once only a dream is now a reality. Welcome home. Break a box is toast. Recommend the whole rewiring. Well, that sounds expensive. Is that something a home equity loan could help with? No clue. But listen, if you're trying to make money fast, head down to the horse track and let it all ride on old Cloud Stomper. Jockey's my cousin. Well, second. That works for you? <laughs> it will work. It will. Let me think about that. Borrow better with our range of fast and easy loans. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Everybody knows Hoffman has it. Did you know Hoffman has even more? There's the fully stocked Hoffman Ford Parts and Accessories Department, the Hoffman state-of-the-art collision facility, confidence in our ultra-modern service facility, peace of mind with master technicians, satisfaction with low prices. Do I really need to say it again? Hoffman has it. Only at Hoffman Ford, Colonial Park. Hoffman Ford, just what you're looking for. Hoffman from Times Square to your local community, from local sports to international conventions, Invica has changed the broadcast and video landscape, bringing professional quality and service to organizations across the globe. Through professional, college level, and local sports, festivals, competitions, parades, and telethons, conferences, and commercials, Invica is bringing the power of video to more people and markets than ever before. Have a project you need covered? Check out our website for more information. Invica, providing affordable HD video solutions. Lock it up at Hoffman Ford. Only Hoffman Ford offers two years maintenance included with any new 2023 Ford car, truck, or SUV order. Plus lock in Ford's lowest APR rate today. Get two years maintenance included exclusively at Hoffman Ford. Why would you order from anywhere else? Who has your best deal on a new Ford? Hoffman has it. Hoffman Ford, just what you're looking for. Hoffman has it. In the dynamic world of construction, Groff Tractor and Equipment stands as your trusted John Deere and working dealer. With our extensive range of construction sales and rentals, we provide the equipment you need to tackle any project. But our commitment doesn't stop there. Our comprehensive parts and service departments are there to make sure your equipment is operating at its best, minimizing downtime and maximizing productivity. Our dedicated technicians ensure your equipment operates at peak performance. Our technician internship opportunities provide a pathway to a successful career. Learn from skilled professionals and grow with us. Trust, reliability, and exceptional service. That's Groff Tractor and Equipment. 
Stop by, give us a call, or visit our website today for more information. Groff Tractor and Equipment, your number one source for everything under construction. From Times Square to your local community, from local sports to international conventions, Invica has changed the broadcast and video landscape, bringing professional quality and service to organizations across the globe. Through professional, college level, and local sports, festivals, competitions, parades, and telethons, conferences, and commercials, Invica is bringing the power of video to more people and markets than ever before. Have a project you need covered? Check out our website for more information. Invica, providing affordable HD video solutions. And thank you to Invica and Chad Edwards and all the guys back in studio for handling everything uh, with us here tonight, uh, pushing all the buttons back in the studio, manning the cameras. Uh, if you were with us last week looking for Lower Doth and Elizabethtown, we did not do the game last week because uh, of the uh, concerns of lightning and our decision uh, ended up being correct. So thank you for uh, those of you uh, who uh, respected our decision and we're glad we have no lightning here tonight. Uh, clear skies still in the 60s here as we get ready for the second half of Hershey and Cedar Cliff. Some first half numbers. The only pass that Seacrest uh, completed uh, was the touchdown pass. He was one for six, 34 yards. He's three rushes for 57 yards uh, for rushing for Cedar Cliff. Tyrell Hills uh, has five rushes for 21 yards. Uh, Eric Shriver, three carries for just uh, a, a loss of one yard. And uh, Nathan Lusk with the touchdown run of 35 yards. The one reception went to uh, Owen Anastasi, uh, the 34-yard touchdown. For Sweeney, for Hershey, uh, two interceptions. He is uh, three for seven tonight, 47 yards, has five rushes for 14 yards. Klein with a carry for a yard. Also, uh, Julius Toronto, a carry for 30 yards. Eric, uh, excuse me, uh, looking at the rest of the, uh, uh, Derek Guzman, two carries minus three yards. Uh, it was uh, Sean Elliott with uh, one carry for no gain. Uh, Grant Later, uh, who filled in for Sweeney at quarterback, had a rush for three yards. And uh, Angel Cabrera, 14 carries, 97 yards. The two uh, cat pass catchers for Hershey, Derek Guzman with a catch for 13 yards, and Joe Agurto with uh, two receptions for 34 yards. And that is the first round of cats on an individual basis here for, for Hershey and Cedar Cliff. Uh, the first half, the uh, coin toss, uh, Hershey got the ball first because Cedar Cliff deferred here to the second half. And there's the horn asking both teams to come back on here for the second half. We mentioned a unique night here in uh, Central PA, all three matchups on the local schedule, all mid Penn Keystone matchups. Uh, Bishop uh, McDevitt taking on Palmyra and Milton Hershey taking on Redland. Uh, tune into Fox 43 tonight. Fox 43 News at 10, Todd Sadowski and uh, the bottom line will have those final scores. And then don't forget tomorrow night at 11, the frenzy, the Fox 43 high school football frenzy uh, with the, the entire team at 11 tomorrow night on Fox 43. Cole Goodman, who had the uh, attempted 43 yard field goal, goes short earlier on in the first quarter, going to kick it off. And Nathan Lusk and Michael Jones back to receive. They're going to keep it away from Nathan Lusk. I don't blame them. And the kick goes into the end zone, 20 yard line, and Cedar Cliff will get the ball first down. From the 20 yard line, it'll come out too. And this is a big possession for Hershey's defense. This game is still very manageable at 21 to seven. If they can come out here, get a stop, get their offense back on the field and get some things going, we can have a ball game again. Lusk will line up as the receiver on the far side. Kate Finkenbonner as the fullback. The lineup, it looks like uh, got Bennett Seacrest in there just waiting for the uh, ready to play. Uh, the, uh, near you side look at official. this formation and you think Bob Craig's the signal caller and the head boss for many decades and you think he's still the wing set with the eye backs. Now they move the two. There's Kyle Brady shifting that tight end's <laughs> eligible to the split end star. Exactly, they go left side. On the far side, this is Eric Shriver, his first big run of the night. 
And he gets all the way out to the 38-yard line. Give him 18 and a first down. That little shift with the tight end in the wing going to the split end side, it's an unbalanced line. If you're Hershey, you have to adjust because they're more men at the point of attack offensively. And they do a great job, Cedar Cliff does, of utilizing that advantage at the point of attack. They didn't use Shriver a whole lot in the first half, only three carries. So his fourth carry is good for a first down up to the 38. Lusk again at the far side, and the give inside this time up the middle, what we're used to with Cedar Cliff, and get it up to the, excuse me, to the 44-yard line. Probably Tyrell Hills. Excuse me, that was Shriver again. So many teams nowadays, guys, run the spread that when you see a team that's going to line up in the old school power formations, you don't get a lot of practice at it, and it can be very difficult to stop. From the 44. And the give is to Lusk. He cuts up field. Close to a first down. They may have to measure. They're actually going to say he got to the 48. It's a first down. Douglas on the tackle for Hershey. As well as Sean Elliott and a first down. This 21-7 lead is going to allow Cedar Cliff to come out and get back to their bread and butter, run the ball, be patient, and get it to your guys. Tight end near side is Carter Enders, who's also the kicker. And we'll Looks see. Like the tight end is going to go and shift over to the other side to an unbalanced line set, and they didn't realize it, and they snapped the ball while he was moving, which is going to be a legal procedure against the Colts. So back him up, first and 15. Only the third penalty on the night for Cedar Cliff. Don't forget, next Friday night, we go to Cumberland Valley as the Harrisburg Cougars visit, 7 o'clock game time. Join us here on Fox 43.2 and HSSLiveTV.com. Three receivers set. Seacrest looking to throw, threw it to the H-back. That is Julius Torado, stood up at the 48. Quarterback sprinted out of shotgun to the trip set. The second, the middle guy in the three receiver set ran a quick flat route, about four yards downfield to the out ball, put red in the money, throwing to his left. Really good quarterback play there and not going to move the chains with the penalty, but it brings him in a manageable second and mid range, it's about six yards. Really like the way Cedar Cliff's mixing up their multiple, using multiple formations, keeping the Hershey defense off balance. Second and six. Wide open, out deep, he didn't see him. They went to Lusk instead, and he's going to try and get out of a tackle, which he will for a first down. <laughs> or are they going to mark it short? Now he was out of bounds at the 44. Four on the gain. Seacrest had Enders, the tight end, with nobody in sight. He was eight to 10 yards behind everybody, but he just wasn't able to locate him down the right hash mark. I'm sure the Cedar Cliff people in the booth see that up top and we'll let the coach know on the sidelines and probably come back to that. Third and two. There they're shifting the tight end of the unbalanced set. 90% they're gonna run that way. There it comes. And they decide to go up the middle and it's still a first down. Shriver. Up to the 41, three yards, but a first down. As this uh, nice drive by Cedar Cliff to start the second half is three minutes old, and they go to their seventh play. Just like Sweeney did for Hershey, Bennett Seacrest goes to the sideline, get the play, and they are in no hurry. Still 18 seconds left on the play clock. Same play. Give up the middle. Shriver, five, six yards. He'll get it up to the 35. Shriver, that's his uh, fourth run on this drive, 33 yards alone on this drive. And just push, that, that push by the offensive line. Give credit to 54, Josh Garcia, among others in there. 
43, Blake Sechrist in there as now well. Now they're in an empty shotgun set, Travis. A lot of mixture of formations here. Really nice job by Cedarcliff keeping Hershey off balance. And I'm not surprised they're going to run it here. Blake Sechrist, first down. Excuse me, Bennett Sechrist. I got to get I got to get the brothers right here. It's first down to the 28. They ran that uh, formation earlier, TJ, and they got a first down with it last time, and again they get it again this time. Yep, and I like when Sechrist takes off and runs the ball. He runs hard. He falls forward. And you know he's 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 a he's a he's a load to bring down. From the 28, Fink and Bonner as the fullback. Shriver, the tailback, move Enders, move Blake Seacrest and Bennett Seacrest gives to the left side. Shriver, he's got a big hole. 15, 10, 5, and is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown. From 28 yards out. I feel like we just went back 25 some years and we're watching Coy Wire, the great Stanford, and an NFL football player just take that football and run to the power side behind Tyler Lent, et cetera, to pay dirt. That's what we're watching here. Exactly. Extra point up, and it is good by Carter. No, it is not. Excuse me. Carter Enders pushes it wide right. No good. 7.08 to go in the third quarter. Cedarcliff 27, Hershey 7 on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. That? Uh, nah, I, I never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. <sighs> I'm there. Eighty yards in the first four, fifty-two off the clock here in the third quarter for Cedar Cliff as they increase their lead to twenty. And for Chapman, you talked about this is a classic Cedar Cliff drive. They ran it three times. They threw two passes in there and then run, 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 and run to the left side for a twenty-eight yard touchdown. When you're able to run the ball with that much efficiency, when you do play action, people are going to be open. Yes, three yards was the shortest gain in that drive. Five first downs total for that drive. This is Guzman. He looks left. Now stutter steps. Gets out of a tackle and look out. 35-40. 45-50. Two men to beat. And tackled at the 26. Really nice athleticism by the other number three. We saw Shriver on one side making play after play from the tailback position. And now we got Guzman for the Trojans. We've got a Cedar Cliff player hurt way down the other end at midfield. Let's take a look at the end of the play here, the uh, the tackle on, on Guzman. He got in broke, Surprised, I was worried he was going to get up close to the 50. Oh, that is definitely a face mask. Yeah, and that Holy was cow. that was not called. And he was, the official was right there watching it, too. I was really surprised. I thought, well, maybe he didn't grab it. But we saw that live, and sure enough, on the replay, he did. Let's take time out here for the injury. 6.54 left to go in the third quarter. 27-7, Cedar Cliff leads Hershey on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. You may recycle your electronics, appliances, and mercury thermostats at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. In addition to eight local drop-off sites for recyclable materials. Recycling matters in Dolphin County. Since 2001, Dauphin County has recycled over 10,000 tons of electronics. And 1.6 million tons of recyclables like cardboard and plastics. Keep up the great work. Bring, Bring it on. on. So 64 yard kickoff return by Derek Guzman. And we are waiting uh, for an injury uh, here to Cedar Cliff. It doesn't look like it's the uh, the cramp variety that we're used to in August and September. Still uh, waiting on the uh, 
waiting on the condition of the young man. While we have a moment, I need to say thank you to Pat and Jim Hamilton, who are babysitting my twins tonight while, uh, while Mommy is bowling at Colony Park Lanes and, and Daddy is up here in the booth. So thank you to Pat and Jim. And also, I want to send a keep getting well message to uh, Warwick bowling coach Neil Vital, who had bone marrow transplant surgery and procedure uh, back in uh, back over the spring and summer in New York City. He is back home in Lancaster County and recovering. And we hope to see you not only back coaching on the lanes, but back bowling on the lanes as well, Neil. One of the best bowlers uh, in the entire, uh, not only Lancaster County, but central Pennsylvania. Neil, glad to see you are doing well. 21 for Cedar Cliff is Keith Williams, a running back and defensive end uh, being carried off. It looks like a lower body injury, might be an ankle or a foot, something in his lower leg. Hopefully he's gonna, it's just a sprain and he'll be able to get treatment and get back in the lineup soon. 26 yard line, Hershey starts. Getting ready here for their first play, the second half. Angel Cabrera, and he's gonna get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe give him a yard here, it'll be second and nine. Cabrera, 98 yards total, had, 90, had 14 for 97 in the first half. As they ran the uh, run pass option to him quite often here in the first half. Now, Guzman, Joe Agurto comes back here. Now they're saying, go back the other way. Still 10 on the play clock. Sweeney, back to throw. Looking at Gerdo's way, and again, pressure. And again, Nathan Lusk. When you release, they released all five receivers on that, including the running back. When you release that many, you're not going to have a lot of time. And the quarterback in your head, you see it here, the fullback actually blocked the right side and just sort of releasing the little layoff in the front, but the quarterback had no time, so he had no time to see him. When you release that many receivers, you got to throw on rhythm. You can't hold the ball too long when you have a rush coming like that, like the Colts' front group. Third sack of the night. Sweeney looks like he's hobbling a little bit here. They're going to need him if they're going to get back into this game. So third and almost 20 now. Sweeney gets a shotgun snap. And he's going to have to run it himself. He's going to be up to about the 26-yard line where this all started. So it's going to be fourth and 10. They're in four down territory here, just inside the red zone, so right about the red zone. We're going to just outside the red zone. But you know you have to go for this because it's a long field goal, and a field goal is not really going to help you here down 20 points midway through the third quarter. Looks like there was a flag. We're just not sure where it was. Uh, un, it was a dead ball foul oh, no. against Hershey. Not good for the Trojans. If you're the Cedar Cliff Colts, you may have to think about punting here if you're Hershey, even if you do it out of shotgun, and try to pin Cedar Cliff back because now you're in a, unless it was not a dead, yes, it was a dead ball. You're right, so it's fourth down and a, a long way. So back to the 41-yard line. He got the... Uh, Ended up getting to the 36, did uh, Sweeney. It's fourth and 25. And they're going to end up going for it, or at least line up like they're going for it. He's not punting from that's close, I'll tell you that. Sweeney back to throw. They might think it's third down. But it was a dead ball. Guzman gets the catch at the 24. <laughs> Excuse me. But not enough for a first down. I wonder if the Hershey Brass thought that was not a dead ball and it was only third down because they ran that route to the sidelines. A really good play if you're going to have a chance at a fourth down, but that was fourth down and it's going to turn the ball over on downs. So to the 26, so they, they go and it's only 15. They needed 25. So You the see the coaching staff out there arguing what's going on. Why is it not third down? They didn't realize it was a dead ball. And the referee clearly marked dead ball on the foul. So Cedar Cliff gets the ball back. Is there any, does anybody think we're getting off tackle here to the short side of field to the wing? Oh, let's go to the other way. <laughs> to the left here. And here it is. 
Jumping to the outside is Shriver. Has another hole and gets the first down territory. Cedar Cliff is doing a really good job with their offensive front, putting a hat on a hat, hitting their blocks, and this running back, Shriver's just seeing the, seeing the gap and getting upfield and just playing old school, power, smash mouth football. Timeout, Hershey. This is a momentum timeout. 4.59 left to go in the third quarter. Cedar Cliff 27, Hershey 7 on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal, to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs, and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. The Jack Jam Bubble. Just under five minutes left to go here in the third quarter. So in the first half, Eric Shriver had three carries, one for two yards, one for one yard, and then he lost four yards in the final play of the first half. His gains here in the second half, 18 yards, six yards, three yards, six yards, 28 yards, 12 yards. Do some quick math here. That is 73 yards here in just the third quarter. Well, we got a tight end and two backs. They're going to run the counter. And they go to Tyrell Hills up to the 41. Three yards. So second down and seven coming up. What the Redskins made famous with the counter tray years ago, that instead of pulling both guard and tackle outside, they have those two backs that are left there. They can be the pullers. And Hershey starts over penetrating or going too strong to the, too hard to the strength. They'll go weak side on that run. Nice play call. Good stop uh, by Hershey. Only limiting them to three yards. I love watching those Redskins teams of the 80s run that play. Flag on the play. Let's see who moved early. Like Somebody on the start. offensive line must have had their hand down and jumped. Tight end was okay. He's the last guy on the line. He can, that's called a tight end trade for one side there. I mentioned Kyle Brady, the great Penn State tight end, longtime pro. When he was at Cedar Cliff, Bob Craig would often shift Kyle from one side to the other to go to a overloaded, unbalanced set and just run that way. So moving back five at second and 12 from the 36. See Chris gives to Hills. And Hills up to about the 46. Yeah, he, they actually marked his knee down at the 43. It's gain of seven. So third and five coming up. Coming up tonight after the game, the Capital Blue Cross post game featuring the Capital Region Insurance Agency play of the game and the Hoffman Ford player of the game. That's all coming up following our game tonight here on Fox 43.2 and High School Sports Live. With TJ Smith and Fort Chapman, Travis Sparks, great to have you with us here at Hershey Park Stadium. 27-7 here, third quarter, and now Cedar Cliff lines up incorrectly and they call timeout as well. First of the half for them. 319 to go, third quarter, 27-7. Cedar Cliff leads on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. Ah, break a box's toast. Recommend the whole rewiring. Well, that sounds expensive. Is that something a home equity loan could help with? No clue, but listen, if you're trying to make money fast, head down to the horse track and let it all ride on old Cloud Stomper. Jockey's my cousin. Well, second. That works for you? <laughs> it will work. It will. Let me think about that. Borrow better with our range of fast and easy loans. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Well, for Chapman, I think we have to give TJ Smith uh, definitely a passing grade here for his first test here on That's High School wonderful. Sports Live. That is wonderful. Hey, I appreciate you guys allowing me to come out and watch some, some good football with you guys on the Thursday. These two evening. teams used to scrimmage. Travis and TJ, under their legendary coaches, Bob Craig for Cedar Cliff, Bob Gump May for Hershey. They didn't play each other back in the days, but they would have a lot of good scrimmage, including 
the 79 season when both teams were very good and the senior quarterback for the Trojans was a great player, Scott Campbell for Purdue and the NFL. And Bob Craig had a lot of powerhouse teams in those er that era. Bennett Seacrest back to throw. Looking, he wants to put it up for Nathan Lusk and it's incomplete. All right, uh, I'm gonna test my memory here. Uh, Scott Campbell played for both the Steelers and the Falcons, am I correct? That's correct. All right. He was also the honorary chairman of Big 33 not that long ago, a handful of years ago. and Just a really, really good football play quarterback. And he was a very good javelin thrower as well. And just a leader of this Hershey team. And they had some good athletes with him in 77, especially 78 and 79. 43-yard line. So a punt coming up for Cedar Cliff as Ziegler gets it out. Guzman is going to let it bounce. And it takes a Colt bounce and to the 20-yard line. Gentlemen, uh, we saw on Monday night, uh, unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers, his season is done. Uh, I'm sad because he was my starting fantasy quarterback. Uh, but uh, I'd like to hear both sides of the, uh, if, if you're in favor of or against, excuse me, uh, turf. We've got it here at Hershey Park. Uh, it's great, <laughs> excuse me, it's great for stadiums that have a lot going on here. But as we go on through the third quarter here, I'd like to hear your opinions, good, bad, indifferent. We'll find out here. First down for Hershey at the 20. And this is Guzman. They've tried this play several times, and Cedar Cliff has snuffed it out several times. He gets maybe a yard on the carry. Brought down by number 15, Anastasi. Sophomore came up really strong. Cedar, I keep bringing the history up. Cedar Cliff safeties have always had run support. A lot of them have been their quarterbacks, not all the time but they're aggressive, hard-nosed, tough kids, and they come up hard in support, and that's what happened right there for the one-yard loss from the safety position. Sweeney has Lust chase him, chasing him down again, and it's gonna be caught by Guzman. Touchdown. And he's got room, and he's gone. This will be six. Touchdown, Guzman. Really nice throw by Sweeney under pressure. Put it up there, chance for Guzman to run under it. Wonderful pass and catch for the Hershey Trojans. They're on the scoreboard. We still have a football game. Cut it to two scores. And Andrew Cabrera is helping Sweeney off the field here. He took a big shot at the end of that play. Lusk, yep, he got, uh, it was a clean hit by Lusk. But then Guzman catches it. The defenders run into each other. And it's an 81-yard touchdown for Hershey. Two plays. And they get right back into it. Look at that pass and catch. Great run after the catch. Picked up a block. Goodman on for the extra point. And hits it to the stage. It's good. 27-14. Hershey cuts the lead to 13. 2.15 to go here in the third quarter. High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. More choices. More laughter. More time to play and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. and live reporter T.J. Smith and championship coach for Chapman. I'm Travis Sparks. Great to have you with us tonight on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2 and HSSLiveTV.com. That is our third two-play touchdown drive tonight. And the first one for Hershey as they cut the lead to 27-14 to here in the third quarter. Goodman to kick off. Nathan Lusk to the right, and they decide to go. No, they're going to go to Michael Jones this time from the five. Out to the 15. He's got a hole to the outside. Gets between a couple tacklers and returns at about 23 yards up to the 28-yard line. Now, if you're Cedar Cliff, you're still up. While you're up two scores, you're not up 14. You're up 13. 
and looks like the Hershey kicking game is really solid. So that one point could make a difference if Hershey can cut that lead. But if you're Cedar Cliff, you just got to think now with two minutes to go in the third quarter. That running game, stick to it, play action, hit some nice passes off play action and try to get this ball down in the red zone. And if you do so, take your, they're going to most likely take their time. Here's the wing eye set. Blake Sechrist in motion. Tyrell Hills gets bottled up in the backfield. It's amazing what momentum can do. Now all of a sudden the Hershey defense is jacked up and he stopped him for no game, but they were struggling with that the whole, most of the third quarter. And in that first half, Hershey's defense didn't play bad. You know, if you take away the, the pick six interception, this is a 21-27 uh, game. Absolutely, good point, TJ. So loss of two, Bennett Sechrist. Comes back in. Tayon Abraham here on the near side. Three, four receiver set. Out of shotgun. Back down the field. He's going to run the back on the wheel. Not open. Seacrest throwing, and Lusk had it and dropped it. Nice job of Seacrest to avoid the... It, it reminded me a little bit of Zach Wilson. Yes. Night, throwing that ball sidearm there to the right, and he put the ball in the money. It was just dropped. Avoiding yeah. the rush there, and now it's a third and long. Lutz had a lot of space out there yes, if he, he came did. up with that. <laughs> yes, he did. The play they were trying to run was getting the back out of the backfield and have him run down the Cedar Cliff sidelines, but Hershey sniffed that out all the way. So from the 26, it's third and 12. Back to the four receiver set. You got to think turnover here if you're Hershey because they're going to put the ball in the air. Screen. But it's snuffed out quickly, and That's the ball penalty. is thrown away. If we have any linemen downfield, it was a screen set. The linemen sort of hung around the line, so it, they were okay. They weren't more than two, three yards down the line, of past the line of scrimmage. On a screen play, you do that. They're trying to hit the running back behind that offensive line. Great possession by Hersey's defense. Came out, yes, got was. a quick three and out. Barely a minute went off the clock, and you get the ball back here to try to go down and score again. Good point. Most times when you have a screen pass as a quarterback, you don't want to throw the ball away down the field. You want to throw it like at the running back's feet or it's going to be a legal lineman downfield. But those linemen did hang around the line of scrimmage. They're okay. Guzman with the fair catch, 38-yard line. And we're going to see, no, we're not going to see, uh, we're not going to see Cam Sweeney. He was hurt on the last play. So Grant later comes back in again at quarterback. Great example for all the young people out there. You never ever say die. You got to keep plugging and battling. And even though you're down by 20, you try to get back in it. And that's exactly what Hershey did. Credit to him. And they got the big play. Now they're only down 13 and they got the ball back. So once again, the sophomore, Grant Later, is in. And he's got two receivers with Cabrera in the backfield. And Cabrera gets it. Tries to bowl over one tackle and only gets yeah, about a yard. So he's right around the 100-yard mark for tonight, but just hasn't cracked it yet. He's got 16 for 99, and Josh Garcia with the tackle. If they run it here, probably the last play of the third quarter. Guzman in motion, they give, uh, no, it's gonna be the option, and it's behind the line of scrimmage, so it's okay if it's forward, but it's only a yard, not even a yard. Got back to the original line of scrimmage, right? And you're right, that's gonna be the, that's gonna be the quarter. That was a risky pitch by Grant there. <laughs> Great catch by Guzman to bring that in and, and, and just not turn it over there. We go to the fourth. Glad you're with us here tonight on High School Sports Live and Fox 43.2. Cedar Cliff with a two touchdown lead, 27 to 14. Fourth quarter next on High School Sports Live. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you.
The Jack G and Bobo family of dealerships. We have millions of dollars in new and pre-owned inventory across eight brands in five locations. Buick GMC, Hyundai, Mazda, Stetler Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, and G and Bobo Hyundai of Hanover. And we want to thank the local community for voting us the 2023 Official Community's Choice Award Best of York and Hanover winner in five different categories. Come out today and find out why your friends and neighbors voted G and Bobo number one. The Jack G and Bobo family of dealerships. Five great locations. Online at GMBobo.com. That was almost a dead even quarter, 97 yards in offense for each team. The difference was Cedar Cliff missed their extra point. It was 21-7 at the half, now 27-14 Cedar Cliff. Hershey third and nine. Grant Later is gonna throw. Got his man, just a touchdown. Looking downfield and he's got Artugo. And if the ball's the thrown, thrown ahead of him, it's a touchdown, but I can't blame him for making sure he completes it. Agurdo, excuse me, and that is a first down. Get it down to the 26, a gain of 34. He got, look at that, way behind the second there, had a weight on the ball, which enabled Cedar Cliff DBs to catch up. I'm not sure why they would get sucked up on a third and nine. You gotta anticipate pass, don't go for a run fake. You're not gonna get there to make that tackle right away anyway. Look at this formation into the boundary, rarely seen. You got. And it's to the short side, too. Yep, that's what I mean by the boundary. Cabrera. Stacked up, going nowhere. When you guys hear short side of field or the boundary, or the near, it's to the, away from the wide side. You don't have as much, especially in high school, the hashes are wider than college, and definitely a lot wider than the pros. So there's not a lot of room to the short side of field. But teams still can utilize it, especially against defenses that may put their strength into the field and what uh, those of you who might not watch football a whole lot got to realize the the hash marks here in high school and college are a lot wider from the middle of the field than they are in the pro game yeah college the, are a little bit closer than to the pros high schools are wider than that cabrera up the middle uh, to about the 23 maybe about the 22. in fact if you look yeah, next time we have a shot in the end zone, the pylons in the back of the end zone are in line with the hash marks. Now, normally in the NFL, the hash marks line up with the goalposts, but uh, here in high school and in college, those back pylons uh, line up with the hash marks. Good thing for Hershey right here as a play caller. You know you have two downs to get to six yards because it's four down territory. Later, looking to throw, looking for Guzman, and he makes the catch! Woo! Touchdown! Wow! Fabulous pass and an even better catch in traffic by Guzman. Ball was right on the money, right where it had to be. Great coverage by the Colts there as well. Looked like 24 for the Colts on defense. Corner Wilburn. Hand fighting, hand fighting, but gets the hands up in time and high points it as best as he can. Look at this ball, watch this pass. Drop it in, beautiful. Extra point by Goodman is good. We've got a six point ball game here. That's a big play by sophomore quarterback Grant Later. He's coming in here, relieving Sweeney and he's playing big. Cedar Cliff 27, Hershey 21 on High School Sports Live on Fox 43. We're back after this. Thanks for watching Mr. Pickles again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. He knows. He knows. He does. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Grant Later with the 22 yard touchdown pass to Derek Guzman. The extra point is good. Six plays, 61 yards, 303 off the clock. And this lead for Cedar Cliff has gone from 20 down to six. In the last a sophomore two quarterback, guys, to put the ball on the money like that in a pressure situation on a third down. Very impressive. Hershey's right back in the game. Goodman 
Sends that one to the end zone. Goodman has a really nice leg on him. His only mistake to, uh, earlier tonight, he missed a 43-yard field goal a little short, but his kickoffs have been excellent. He's done well on all of his extra points. And you never know, they're gonna, they might call on him. Well, if, if Hershey can tie the ball game up, it could be his extra point that would be the difference here. All right, Cedar Cliff back on it from the 20. This is a big possession for Cedar Cliff here. They want to get something going now. They want to run clock as best as possible, too. Blake Seacrest and Carter Enders in motion. Bennett Seacrest gives to Eric Shriver outside and nothing doing. That Hershey defense is woken up in the second half. Travis and TJ, I missed the first half. I'm here for the second. I feel like I'm watching two halves of football in one quarter. Cedar Cliff was completely dominant, as everybody sees at home here, for the first part of that, almost the whole third quarter. And all of a sudden, Hershey catches fire. Tenacity gets back in the game, and now their defense is just playing, run stuffing, a totally different defense, it looks like, from the first two possessions of the second half. Looks like the Hershey secondary put on the afterburners, too, because that was a really nice tackle by Davon Williamson on the far side. Now Bennett Seacrest wants to go to the air. He's looking and it's going to be incomplete. They were trying to get to Lusk. And Mr. Guzman, who's had a really good second half, had nice coverage. They tried to run the split end on a, on a post route. They had a tight end running a deep drag, two receiver route, went for the home run. And as you said, Travis, really good coverage back there for Guzman and the Trojans. This is a big third down here. Hershey can get the ball back with nine minutes to go. They're in good shape. Switch in uh, personnel. Corey Schaefer Jr., 52, coming in and 72. Tucker Belonsky coming out for Hershey. And Cedar Cliff takes a timeout. They only have one left. 9.15 to, to go. That now, especially with a six point lead. Let's keep it here. Left. Let's keep it here for the this. The uh, Bubble family of dealerships. We have millions of dollars in new and free. Critical third and 11. Play action is not necessary here because you're probably not going to get the 11 yards. Hershey's probably not going to bite on the play. So you, I'm expecting Cedar Cliff to line up in a some kind of spread set. They've shown it some. Maybe a one back, four receiver set, and try to get some guys down the field and draw up your best pass play and try to get an open receiver. But you got to still be careful if you're the Colts. You're going to have to punt it away if you don't get it but you definitely don't want a turnover because the momentum is in Hershey's side and you don't want to give the Trojans that short of a field. Cedar Cliff's last two third down attempts, incomplete and incomplete. They were third and five and third and 12. This is third and 11 from their own 19. They bring one Julius Torado and two Teon Abraham here to the near side, two receivers far side, Bennett. Bennett Seacrest back Running to throw, back. and he's got Michael Jones in the open. To the 50. Splits more defenders, and he gets out of a tackle to the 30. And stops right there. They ran a double slot, as you saw. You saw the wide screen there on the formation. Four wide receivers out. They ran the running back right up the middle, past the linebackers, into that open void. Takes a little bit of time, and you got to have good protection, as we'll see it again here. And a beautiful pass and catch by the Colts, here it is, running back right out, up the seam, linebacker if you're lying, you gotta jam him. You gotta run right with him or jam him and take him off his route. Big throw by Seacrest there, he threw that on the, on the money. 51 yards and a first down to the 30. What a call and what execution by the Colts. And they go to Seacrest again, up the middle, and he breaks free and he's gone. Touchdown, Cedar Cliff. Wow, 30 yards. You got to think the Colts may want to go for two here with eight and a half to go, up 12. That extra point really isn't going to help you much. The big scheme of things with Hershey having a really good kicker. 30-yard touchdown. Four-play drive, 80 yards after Hershey got it to within six. Whew, right, right over the power, the right dead smack over those two lead blockers that are up there in that old Central Bucks West formation, if you will, that Mike Pettin Sr. used to run for his fabulous Dynasty in Bucks County that won numerous state titles with those kind of plays. 
Carter Enders, extra point is good. 8.34 to go. It is 34-21. Cedar Cliff leading Hershey on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. All across Pennsylvania, families are living their lives in their own homes. Not long ago, none of these families believed it possible. And then they discovered there was someone who could help. What was once only a dream is now a reality. Welcome home. Yard touchdown run straight up the middle from Eric Shriver. And the lead is back to 13 for Cedar Cliff in a Back and forth mid pen keystone battle of unbeatens tonight here on Fox 43.2. Don't forget, tomorrow night, 11 o'clock, the high school football frenzy with Todd Sadowski and the entire team at Fox 43 on Big Fox 43 tomorrow night at 11. So back and forth we go. Colin Gillen, Cedar Cliff's head coach, was an assistant Big 33 coach this past season. And you would think that he was working under Bob Craig for years with this <laughs> offense. It's, it's nice to see. It brings back old times and old memories for a lot of Cedar Cliff fans, I'm sure. Enders with the kick. And that is taken by Davon Williamson. 20, 25, 30 flag. And that'll be the third time tonight on a Hershey kick return that we have a flag. So flag thrown at the 25, most likely holding and correct. Mark it all the way back to the 15. Like you said, Travis, this is the third time on a kickoff that Hershey's had a penalty and they're having to start their drives back behind the 20 yard line. Just putting yourself in a bad position. So Grant Later back in. Also has LJ Douglas in there as a tight end. Mark Painter's squad is gonna, it's a must score touchdown situation. You're probably gonna get two full possessions here yet and you gotta score TDs on both and stop Cedar Cliff when they get the ball if you score the first. But it's, it's, it's possible. Especially the way the Cedar Cliff offense has been churning out big plays in the second half. And Guzman here on the boundary. Later, running for his life, looking, gets it out to Agurdo. 20, 25, 30, and a first down, and a good job of hanging in there by Grant Later. I like Later. He showed a lot there, TJ, by just avoiding the rush and knowing where his safety valve is to get rid of that football and not take the sack. Yep, keeping the play alive with his legs, finding his guy down there, and, and just making a play. Sweeney, who Later is replacing, and Later are both sophomores. And they're uh, proving their worth tonight. First and 10 at the 32. Guzman in motion. Option. And the RPO goes to Cabrera. And this is what you can't afford. It's okay to run the ball and get eight yards, but you got to hustle. You got to get in and out of the huddle, run the place because you, you're two scores behind and the clock's ticking under eight minutes now. Time is of the essence. Later quickly brings the play back in, breaks the huddle with. 28 to go on the play clock. And I'd like to see him move a little go. more a little more quickly. <clears throat> you got 60 yards to go here. Later. Looks left, looks right. Throws incomplete. Nothing wrong with that on second and short. Don't take a sack. Don't force a pass right now. Get back and regroup. You got two downs to get two yards, and you don't really need to go any short. You want to just try to keep working the ball down the field here. And you score with about, in the next two and a half minutes, you still have two timeouts left. You can get the, you can stop Cedar Cliff and get the ball back. Four wides, two to each side. Got the bubble up top, the wide side. Later looking to throw, under pressure, and incomplete. Was trying to get it out to Cabrera, but he was under pressure. And that Cedar Cliff line has been just hammering, hammering away at the, 
Hershey quarterbacks all night long. So fourth and short. Really nice pressure by the Colts there. You got to get this first down if you're Hershey. You need two yards. Just not a lot of time left if you don't get it. In a very difficult situation to win this football game. Could be the ball game, even though 7-16 left to go. This still could decide it here. Fourth and two. Later, got him under pressure incomplete. Short-armed it to Guzman. Guzman had a little bit of room. And Good later, job by the Colt defense. And later came up a little bit lame as well, but he jogs off under his own power. So 7-11 to go, and Cedarcliff up 13. Looks like an ankle for 32 for the Trojans. Sean Elliott. Excuse me, not, not Elliott, Angel Cabrera. Cabrera yeah. Over 100 yards tonight for him. And now... Off tackle to the left. Almost a guarantee. There it is. Oh, he's bootlegging. Naked boot. And will he and end up being a good decision? Yes, it will. Sometimes those naked boots can really, they fooled us here. Up in the boot, they can fool you on defense too. Tough, tough quarterback, number 14 for the Colts. Bennett Seacrest. Seacrest. Four yards on the gain. So bring up second down and six. More in a line of many, many. The Matt Copes, Sean Starner, a lot of tough nuts. And I say that in a good way. Tough guys that were not just playing quarterback there. As I told you earlier, they're lining up at safety and hitting people all football game. Most importantly, the clock continues to run. Play clock down to seven. Bennett Seacrest gives to Shriver, and immediately L.J. Douglas brings him down in the backfield. When you're to that, that on this play here, to the short side of field, to your split end side, you only have a guard and a tackle. And the Hershey defender came off really fast on the corner there and made a great play on the tailback. You got to start thinking if you're Hershey, do we want to use timeouts? But we're two possessions down, and you want to try to save them for the end, but this clock is ticking under six minutes now. Cedarcliff wants to keep the ball in bounds. Definitely don't run out of bounds, and you probably you don't want an incompletion. They're going to try to throw it here. Seacrest throws, and incomplete. Incomplete. Seacrest had, had a lane there to run. And he may have picked up the first down. If anything, he'd have kept the ball in bounds and clock moving. The clock is Hershey's big enemy right now. So Evan Ziegler coming back in to punt. A similar situation like this in the first half. They downed it at the four. I would have liked to see Seacrest run there four. Like you said, he runs hard. Good things happen when he puts his head down and, and, and just runs. Bad snap, but Ziegler handles it nicely and the fair catch is made by Guzman at the 14. You got to get in a quick pace now if you're Hershey. 535 as you see on the screen there to go. It's now first and 10 Hershey. They got to go 85 yards in a hurry and it looks like it may be onside kick time if you do score. Unless you get a big play here and score in the next two minutes. Because two timeouts, you can still get the ball back with around a minute and a half to go. And Guzman has proven that he can beat this defense. Later, flushed out. Got him down the sideline. Has Guzman. There he is. And breaks free to the outside, tries to split a defender, and now he's got open field to the 41. It's a first down. Beautiful job making something out of nothing by the quarterback, and then number three for Hershey. He is Electric Guzman, the senior wide receiver. A lot of skill there, made a couple guys miss, got the ball up past the 40 yard line. You gotta get in out of the huddle. Clock started after the chains were moved. Four wide set. Guzman near side flank. Later looks to the left side and it's intercepted. And gone is Julius Torado. Touchdown. Wow. You got to throw those quick outs to the inside receiver. You have to put them on the money if they're the quarterback. You throw it over the head. There often is a defender just waiting there. You can throw it on the money. You got a five yard break tackle, six, seven, 10, 15 yard gain. But 
overthrowing that is can cause some serious difficulty for the offense, and it did right there. Third interception for Cedar Cliff, second pick six on the night. And that one comes at uh, the five minute mark here, and they're gonna bring the extra point kicker back out. That is Carter Enders. So Lee can come back to 20 for the Colts. Flag. Too many men on the field. Legal per uh, participation by Hershey, probably. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, 12 guys in the field for Hershey. That moves the ball to the one and a half. I'm taking my offense back on the field. I'm getting this to 21. It doesn't really matter right now with just under five minutes to go. But now they wave the team to stay on the field. At least, at least that's the first signal I saw from, from the sideline. Yeah, nothing wrong with just kicking this extra point right now. Declined it. To go up 20. And it is back to a 20 point lead for Cedar Cliff. 4.59 to go, fourth quarter. Cedar Cliff 41, Hershey 21. On High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. <clears throat> Lock it up at Hoffman Ford. Only Hoffman Ford offers two years maintenance included with any new 2023 Ford car, truck, or SUV order. Plus, lock in Ford's lowest APR rate today. Get two years maintenance included exclusively at Hoffman Ford. Why would you order from anywhere else? Who has your best deal on a new Ford? Hoffman has it. Hoffman Ford. Just what you're looking for. Hoffman has it. 41-21 after the second pick six tonight by the Cedar Cliff defense. That one run back by Julius Torado. The other one run back by Nathan Lusk in the first half. And Mr. Enders kicks off again for Cedar Cliff. It comes down to Davon Williamson. Looking for a seam. And for the fourth time tonight, we have a flag. Again, it's a hold on Hershey. We're gonna have to start this drive again back behind the 20. I think I know what they're going to be working on in practice next week. Kick coverage and keeping the hands down. So from the 12, Hershey begins again. Sophomore quarterback Grant Later with four receivers. Derek Guzman in motion. Instead, they hand it off to Klein. And Klein up to the 18-yard line. Bring up second down and four. Back to throw is later, flushed again. Throws and had his arm hit on the follow through, trying to get it to Guzman, incomplete. So bring up third down and four. The Cedar Cliff's defensive line knows that Hershey's throwing the ball right now. They can just pin their ears back and chase the quarterback. It's gonna be real tough for Grant later to get time back there. Third and four. 
Later back to throw, it's Guzman to the 29, and he breaks free down the sideline and gets to the 50. For all the young defensive backs out, any defender, if you're number 24 out there in space, for Cedar Cliff, nice player, Wilborn, Elijah, but he needs, to, Elijah needs to keep, you got three defenders there, you got to keep the receiver inside. Back to your help, don't let him get down the side, don't go for an inside fake there like he did after the catch, allowing that skilled Guzman to run down the sidelines. Bring him back to your help. Keep your outside arm and leg free, force him inside. First down from the 50. And Guzman gets the pitch out to the 43, a gain of seven. And he stayed in bounds, almost got out. He's tackled in bounds, so that's gonna keep the clock moving. Under four minutes now. Now they marked him out of the 45, so only a gain of five. It's second and five, and Hershey quickly up to the line. Cedar Cliff with a four-man rush. Come bringing five on the edge there. Later, gets through. Got a touchdown. Oh, we didn't see him. Tough job for the quarterback there. He's running for his life. He had Guzman go down the field late. He, would have, he was right on the line of scrimmage. He could have thrown it if he had seen him and gotten the TD. I'm impressed with some of these athletes for both squads here in the Keystone Division. A nice, Keystone has a lot of good teams this year. It should be interesting to see as we go through the season. Keystone, we're talking about the second division of Mid-Pen. Commonwealth is the higher, more of the 6A teams. From the 42, Klein in the backfield with Later. Later just looking to get some pocket time and he falls down and before the, before the ball was fumbled, his knee went down. So that's, that goes as a sack and it's about a 10 yard loss. And just to go back, Travis, on what we talked about a little earlier, you know, the debate, would you, do you prefer turf over grass? It looked like later just slipped up on the turf there, and again, he's coming up hobbling. There's been some weird injuries out here. Could it be the turf? Hard to tell right now. And it's a dry night, uh, not too much humidity, so can't tell. Later back to throw on fourth down. And pass is incomplete. Was looking for Guzman. And Toronto cramping up in front of us. But he's gonna he's gonna walk off under his own power. So 253 left to go. Cedarcliff gets the ball in Hershey territory at the 48-yard line. Seacrest gives to about the 35. That is Eric Shriver, 13 yards and another first down. Coming up, Hoffman Ford, player of the game. Capital Regions Insurance Agency, play of the game. Capital Blue Cross post game report all coming up following our game tonight. Got a lot of candidates we can choose from for player of the game, so we've still got two minutes to decide that. As Cedarcliff comes out now. In their run between the tackles formation. Eric Shriver to the 31. That's four more. Clock ticks, 90 seconds to go. Highlights of this game coming up tonight on Fox 43 News at 10. And then don't forget the frenzy tomorrow night at 11. Shriver again. More first down yardage down to the 23. That's eight more yards. He's had a heck of a second half.
Cumberland Valley and Harrisburg next week from Chapman Field, 7 o'clock game time. Next Friday night here on Fox 43.2. Worldwide at HSSLiveTV.com. Play clock. Smartly Bennett Seacrest waiting until it gets down to 3-2, and he's going to take a knee. You know, there's no moral victories out here, but if I'm Hershey, there's a lot of good things that we got to talk about at practice next week, along with the things that we need to improve on. Uh, you know, Grant later came in, and I thought he did a good job. Young sophomore quarterback, their defense, you know, they, they played well. They didn't play their best game, but, you know, the turnovers that Cedar Cliff was able to create on their side of the ball on defense just were huge. They're going to let the last 10 seconds tick down, and that'll do it. As Cedar Cliff goes to 4 and 0 and gets their first win in conference play. 41 21 over Hershey. Stay tuned. Capital Region, uh, Capital Blue Cross post game report. Hoffman for player of the game. Capital Region Insurance Agency play of the game. All coming up following this on Fox 43.2. So a while back, I thought to myself, I'm never going to own a home. I'm going to have to rent forever. I didn't have money for a down payment. I had no credit history, and I just got out of a divorce. But PHFA showed me that home ownership is possible. They offer me a low interest mortgage and a way to manage the closing cost. To me, this is more than just my home. It's a huge accomplishment and a new chapter in my life, thanks to PHFA. That's everything. Receipts in the bag. Awesome. Say, how do you, like, budget? Hmm. Well, I have a spreadsheet that I update annually. Okay. And I round up on income and round down on expenses. Well, that sounds backwards, right? No, I'm pretty sure that's right. Income up, debt down. <laughs> Looks good on paper. Huh. Keep your budget in shape with our personal finance tool. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Everybody knows Hoffman has it. Did you know Hoffman has even more? There's the fully stocked Hoffman Ford Parts and Accessories Department, the Hoffman state-of-the-art collision facility, confidence in our ultra-modern service facility, peace of mind with master technicians, satisfaction with low prices. Do I really need to say it again? Hoffman has it. Only at Hoffman Ford, Colonial Park. Hoffman Ford, just what you're looking for. Hoffman has it. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal, to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs, and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. In the dynamic world of construction, Groff Tractor and Equipment stands as your trusted John Deere and working dealer. With our extensive range of construction sales and rentals, we provide the equipment you need to tackle any project. But our commitment doesn't stop there. Our comprehensive parts and service departments are there to make sure your equipment is operating at its best, minimizing downtime and maximizing productivity. Our dedicated technicians ensure your equipment operates at peak performance. Our technician internship opportunities provide a pathway to a successful career. Learn from skilled professionals and grow with us. Trust, reliability, and exceptional service. That's Groff Tractor and Equipment. Stop by, give us a call, or visit our website today for more information. Groff Tractor and Equipment, your number one source for everything under construction. Welcome to the post game report presented by Capital Blue Cross. Thank you for joining us tonight on Fox 43.2 and High School Sports Live with TJ Smith and Fort Chapman. I'm Travis Sparks. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And you picked a darn good game to have for your first game here on High School Sports Live. Absolutely, absolutely. This was uh, the score doesn't necessarily tell how close the game was, especially you know before that last turnover. But this was a great game. I think both teams you know have good things that they can go back after this and, and improve on. And you know. Hershey or what? Three and one? It's a long season. 
And if you happen to only watch the second half, hint, hint, uh, you didn't miss a whole lot in the first half, but if you only saw the second half, that was a heck of a game. Travis and JT, I was super impressed with Hershey's ability to come back and just keep battling. They cut it to a score. It was third and long, and Cedar Cliff dialed up a fabulous pass route. Four receivers out. They got the back down the middle on the linebacker, pass and catch, and it led to their touchdown, and then obviously the pick six, and it was that was all she wrote. Well, let's, let's show you the play that got us to 27-21 because we've chosen that as our play of the game presented by Capital Region Insurance Agency. Grant later had come in for Cam Sweeney at quarterback and laid one out, a nice pass to do it. And Mr. Guzman, uh, let me give him to correct here, Derek Guzman, a heck of a catch in the end zone, a 22-yard touchdown. That made it 27-21 as uh, we played on in the fourth quarter. That was with uh, eight, with uh, excuse me, with 10 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. But as Ford said, Michael Jones made that nice 51-yard touchdown catch, and it made it 34-21. And eventually, our final was 41-21. Our player of the game may not have made a whole lot of noise in the second half, but he made a lot of noise in the first half, just like he did last week. And we're going to go with Nathan Lusk from Cedar Cliff, number six. Not only did he have a touchdown on offense, he had a touchdown on defense as well. And he was all over the field, TJ, in the first half. Yes, I think, you know, everyone watching this game can say that Nathan Lusk is a dog on both sides of the ball. And we've seen a lot of those kind of players from Cedar Cliff lately who excel in both offense, defense, and you can even include special teams as well. you got a lot of them. No doubt um, about it. No doubt about it. Cedar Cliff has a really nice football team. They're physical. They have some good athletes, and they play together as a team. And cats off to the coaching staff of the Colts. we got a dandy for you next weekend. It's at Chapman Field, Friday night, 7 o'clock. Cumberland Valley will be hosting Harrisburg, and we hope you can join us here on Fox 43, uh, Fox 43.2 and hsslivetv.com. Thanks to the folks in Invica, Chad Edwards and the team for producing everything tonight. Thanks to Hershey and Cedar Cliff and everybody watching at home. Thank you for watching here on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. For TJ Smith, for Fort Chapman, Charlie Fortney, I'm Travis Sparks. 41-21, Cedar Cliff over Hershey. Thank you for joining us and please buckle up.